Santee. Yeah, Santee of the Arizona Ghost Riders. What's that? Hey, what, what? You got mail. We got mail? Yeah. What? Okay, okay. Santee, do you have anything on Old West Boots? Army Norb. Boots? We got a lot of stuff on boots. What's some boots? Boots are designed to protect the foot and ankle from mud, water, rattlesnakes, sharp brush, and other hazards. They are often seen on horsemen and other outdoor laborers because of the protection that they provide. A high heel seen on many cowboy boots provides a more secure method of keeping the boot in the stirrup. You may also see an extension in the back of the heel to support spurs. This is called a spur ridge. This practical style is a throwback to the Spanish colonial cowboys of the 18th century. In 1987, the steamboat Arabia was discovered buried in the mud, and what was found inside was a time capsule for the mid-19th century. In 1856, when it sank in the Missouri River, the Arabia had 200 tons of goods headed for the Wild West. Perfectly preserved tools, foodstuffs, textiles, as well as over 4,000 shoes and boots. This gave historians a real insight to not only the varieties of footwear, but the way they were constructed. Guess what? Women wore boots too. In polite society, ladies' ankles weren't exposed, and boots solved that little issue. Some women's boots laced up. It was more form over function, though. To clarify, I asked Jenna Miller from Ravenna's New and Old West Vestures, who told me, The tight laced boots gave the impression of modesty, but also accentuated the curves of the ankle and calf. They wanted a curvaceous silhouette down to even their feet in that era without showing too much skin. Today's cowboy boots are constructed in a similar fashion, but have some differences. The pointed toe didn't come about until the 1940s. Some say it guides the foot into the stirrup, others say it serves no practical purpose. The shaft, or stovepipe, kept water and mud from filling the boot up during water crossings. If you had a lot of money, you could have custom boots made that would fit your feet like a glove. You could also get fancy stitching at the top, or even cutouts. Due to the cost, most settlers bought factory-produced footwear, much like today. You would shape it by soaking it in water and wearing it, but if they hurt your feet, you couldn't just send them back to famous footwear and get an exchange in three days. If the trading post or mercantile didn't have a different pair, you were out of luck. Alright folks, hope you learned something about boots in the Old West. There's a lot to learn. There is, yeah. And now the moment you've all been waiting for. We put all your names in a hat. All of those people who wrote down inflatable sheep. Is this your idea? Or was it I Bat like Jack's it. idea? Either way. Bat Jack's idea this time. I'm going to have my, uh, my uh, lovely assistant, Dana White, here help me out. Really? Yeah. There it goes. Bill Brazelton. Bill Brazel? It can't be Bill Brazelton. What's... And Bill Brazelton. Oh, come on. And let's see. Bill Brazelton. Yeah. Woo, woo. Here it goes. Obviously, we have the wrong hat. Let's try this one. All right. Bunch of names in there. Hopefully, none of them are Bill Brazelton. Go ahead and draw. Dustin Weiniger. Dustin! Hey! Look way to go! That. Congratulations! You know, he just got a Walker Colt. Did you know that? Oh, well, maybe we can make a trade. Yeah, maybe we should make a trade. We'll uh, trade you our cheap gifts for your <laughs> Walker Colt. <laughs> yeah. Thanks all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. Knew that was coming. You betcha.